just another easy way that you can go through and you can set up your code to make it easier for you or your code templates to make it easier for you. Well, we're going to set up a database to track grades and to record grades. And we'll do that over the next couple of uh, class periods, probably about a uh, little over a week and a half maybe. We'll see how long it takes. And we looked at last week talking about lists and we talked about files and we talked about opening and closing and reading files. And this is just an example uh, of how the header might look and we're going to get into actually using some functions today. Don't worry about copying this code down because we're going to use something else. But just as a reminder, we talked about open files and we could open a file to read and to write. So what we want to look at is some requirements for the script that we're going to create. And our first requirement is that it has to be able to create a data text file. So we know we're going to record data. We have to be able to create that file. And we know from what we studied last week that we can do that. Then we have to be able to write to that text file pretty easy. We're going to be able to do that too because we saw how that worked and we'll look at it in more detail today. Then we've got to be able to go back and we've got to read that text file that we created and take the data and turn it into information. Now that's what we'll be doing next week is figuring out how to turn that data that we've recorded into information. Also, we've got to be able to read and write a student name and a student score. So we're looking at recording groups of scores for a variety of different students and then computing grades. So we'll see how that function is done. Then we need a menu to tie the whole thing together. So that's going to be a challenge in some of the areas that we're working with. Oh, Bill. By the way, as we're going through this, we're going to figure out how to use the list function to work with this data text file that we're creating to make things go faster or to be able to do some things in a list function that we can't do with the data text file. So this is really your introduction to files and the most effective way to use them. Now, this is a partial requirements list. This is going to get us started, and then we'll go from there to see what happens. So if you were doing this totally on your own, and you were using the buyer's principle of how to develop the code, you've got several different areas that you would like to work in. The first one is we need to be able to create this data text file that we're going to work with. So the easiest way to start with this is what's listed on line 15 up here. My file equals open. We give a file name. We give it an extension. And then if you'll remember, we open it up to write. So comma W. There are a couple more different options that we can open a file with. And we're going to look at those in a little more detail on Thursday. So if you're aware of those, just hold that vast knowledge back until Thursday, and we'll look at it a little more. Quiz question. Where is this file going to create? The same directory that you've created this, the Python script that you started to get to this point, that's where this text file is going to say when we work with it. So line 15, uh, line 15 here on the screen it is fairly easy. It's something that we did last week. Now let's add to it. We have the file, and now we're going to write to it. We opened it to write, but then we have to tell Python we're writing to it right now. And notice how I set up the input. What we want to start looking at is how can we effectively employ what we've learned about Python so far this semester. And so instead of creating a list of variables, that we're going to use to transfer data back and forth. Let's just write directly to the file. Again, remember at line 16 we talked about last week, 
it's good to add a new line character as you create your data. And that way, it won't get all bunched up into a single line. Okay, for testing and development, uh, each entry is going to be on its own line for now. We're testing and developing our process, so we want to be able to easily go through and look at the prescribed data that we've entered and see if we can handle it, so, or see if our program's handling it. So we're going to put each piece of data on its own separate line. We're not going to have any blank lines in the data, so the file needs to be able to append itself when we get to that point on Thursday without adding blank lines in. Why would we want to append the file and not have a blank line? You don't want to try and do operations on a blank line and one of the easiest ways, if you're not using a soldier, what's a, a soldier when we talk about Python data files? Or a marker? It shows it's the end of the file. If you don't have a marker or a soldier set up or a sentry set up, one of the easiest ways to determine the end of a file is to read the file and check the length. And if the length of the line that you just read is zero, a blank line, then you've reached the end of the file. Well, we can't have blank lines throughout our data. So uh, we want to make sure that our data gets written without a blank line. So, let's add one more piece of code to the two that we've already got, and that's line 17. We're writing the data, and now we're going to write to the next line. And let's see how, well, we'll put one more piece of information in, and then we'll see how it happens. So, 17 is pretty simple, nothing cosmic there. 18, again, we're going to be efficient. We're going to input the data directly to the file. Is there a gotcha in line 18? Is there something we need to be aware of? Okay, but how does Python score or store data that we input into a file? As a string. Does that bother you? The answer should be no, because we're going to read it out, right? Correct? And when we read it out, what can we do? We can create, we can read it to a float. We can create it as a float as we read it, or as an integer, or whatever we need to create it as. So, in the past, some students have gotten upset. Oh, wait a minute! What are we going to do? Because this is going to be read as a string. So Python gives us a way to convert it if we need to do it. Last line of code. Next to the last line of code, and we'll see if you can predict the last line. We're going to add that file to make sure we terminate that. No, not going to read it. We're not there. We're not to read yet. What's the next line? Stop it from reading any more lines. You got the right idea. What do we call that? File closed. Yeah, an end, file closed. So that's the last line you want to have in this, file closed. Now, don't get ahead. We're going to run this code in a second. But what problem do you see? Right now, there's a problem with our code. It's going to work. No, I don't think so. We might. We'll see. Good thing to look for, though. What's the problem with the code? I can only, gold star, I can only do one student at a time. So I would have to run this multiple times and figure out a way not to erase my test under bar 01.txt because what happens when you create a file with the W in Python? No, you can read it, but it erases that file name and all the data that was there. Is this acceptable? Right now, yes, because we're testing. But we know we're going to have to figure out a way to allow us to loop through this. So go ahead and test it. Enter a student name, enter a score, and then once you're done and you close that program, in your file menu for this project, you should see test under bar 1 dot text and if you double click on it it'll open that file up and it should show you the data you just created. I see one head going up and down. So we've got the concept of a file but we know we've got some problems with it. We need to loop it, 
we need to be able to add data to it without recreating the file again, which will erase all the data that we have. And you'd be amazed how many times in, in writing professional code people will miss that in line 15. Well, I wrote that file before and it's gone all of a sudden and I can't figure out why. Well, we can do better. So there are a couple things that we want to take a look at. And the first thing we'll look at is line 15. This is where we open the file up. And so let's create that as a function instead of having it just the same line. Now, I decided I'd use create file, and in parentheses, I have file names. So what's that tell you about this function? It's got a parameter, right. OK, so let's start with four. Now, we, you notice that when we did the input for our data just a couple of minutes ago, we didn't mess around with a lot of variables. And we're going to do a variation to that when we add line 5. And that is we're going to create a variable called new file. And look how we're opening up our file to write to. We're taking the file name that we sent to the module and we're adding the .txt. And, of course, the comma w for write. So we can do that. We can create a file name when we're ready to program it. And it gives, it gives us a lot more latitude. Let's say I had four different sections of Python. All right, so I could create a file for each Python class if I wanted to. Well, that's pretty easy. Any questions about line five? Let's go to line six. Very simple. All I'm doing, doing is returning new file. Now, what will Python see? It's the object that's been opened to write data to. And we can create that as a variable. So if you're going to write anything down about the class or you're going to remember anything, remember that we can create an open file, a write file, an append file, an image file as a variable. And it acts just like the file name test underbar one dot text that we created up in line 15. Line 15 we used a variable anyway. But now we can create it in a module. Gives us much more latitude. Now, what do we need to, to make these three lines of code work? Well, we need some way to talk to them, right? If you remember back to boot camp, this is how we talk to that function. So I'm using my file equals create new file, and then take a look at that input statement. Again, we're being efficient in our coding. Don't do this if you're getting paid by the line of code. Make it as long as you can make it. But if you're getting paid by when we run the program the first time, we can set up the file that we're going to work with and we can open it up. And then this gives us a little more latitude to do the work that we need to do. And notice our input is being sent up to the variable that we're sending to the function. Can I use those variables anyplace else in my code? Would you bet me a Starbucks? Galaxy Latte. Outside of that function, can I use new file or file name again? I can use both. Because when we're working with a function or a module, any variable used within that module is called a local variable. That means it's only valid in that module. So I could write a bunch of different create files or read files like we will in a, in a few minutes. And I can use those same, I can use file name and I can use new file because they're local variables. Down here, my file, I can only use that once. All right. I can only have it open right now as a write function. So one of the things that we didn't cover when we, in the boot camp when we talked about modules and functions is the fact that any variable we use in that modular function is a local variable. 
It's not passed back and forth. We have the opportunity to use something called a global variable if we would want to use a variable from a function, but there are easier ways to do that. Global variables are very hard to keep track of. So you're much better creating local functions and then passing it down to a variable in your program like we did in line 9. So line 9 actually becomes our open file object that we're working with. So we got rid of line 15. We figured out a way to do that that's a little more user friendly. We can create any line that we want to create. And now we've got to deal with these lines. And how are we going to handle them? So what we talked about before we started down this part of the code is the fact that our test program worked fine, but we could only enter one record and then we had to run it again. So now we've got to figure out a vehicle that we're going to do that with. If we knew exactly how many grades we were going to enter every time we started the program to record grades, we could use a for loop and have the for loop equal the number of students in the class and then that for loop would run, we'd enter our grades, and we'd be done. But students don't turn their work in all at the same time, unless it's an in-class quiz. So we need a vehicle to tell us, all right, you can run for this long and then stop. So the best option that we have is a while loop. And we'll use a while loop as a Boolean, and we'll say, create the variable, keep going, and we'll say keep going starts by being equal to true. So now under my headers for variables, I've created my file and I've created keep going. That's probably all I'm going to need right now. Everything else will get created if it needs to be in the main loop. Remember true is capitalized. Well now this becomes very easy. We take the file, the uh, lines 14, 15, 16, and 17 that we've already created and we encapsulate them with the while keep going. Make sure you indent 14, 15, 16, and 17. Pretty simple so far. We build a program that we know works and, and now we're adding on to it. Now we've got a couple more things that we have to do yet. One is close the file and we've already got code written for that but we have to figure out exactly how we want to close the file. So what do we need to include in our while statement that will allow us to run as long as we want to run? We control when we're going to end. Well, some kind of endpoint. What's the easiest way? Remember, we've got to take a Boolean and turn it from true to false. So how about if we do that with a simple if statement. We've got an if input, and you may not have seen, I can't remember if I showed you this during the boot camp or not. Line 19, again, we're being efficient as we write our code. If input, add more data, yes or no. If it equals no, then we're going to run the if statement and keep going is going to equal false which means our while loop is finished. If it's not, then we're just going to print a blank line and enter more data. And then at the very bottom of that, you should see your closeout, your myfile.closed, left over from the initial code that we wrote. This is still indented with the while loop, right? Yes. Okay. The if and else are indented equal to the input statement set we had and the keep going equals false is indented yet another uh, position. So when you get your code done and you run it, it should look something like this. New name, or the name for your file, Mickey got 99, Donald Duck got 61, and Goofy got 87 or make up whatever names you want to make up and put in some scores. Quiz question. That last line in each of those entries, add more data. Do I have to type Y in there? Look at our code. Do I have to type Y in there? All I need, really need to do if I want to continue is just hit the enter key, correct? 
until you want to stop it. Then you hit no. Then I hit N, correct. You'll find out that if you put type N to stop, some end users will get upset. Well, what if I want to keep going? What do I need to do? And they don't relate while to any key. So you, you give them um, a placebo. You give them a Y, all right? And religiously, they'll type Y in there, when in actuality, they could type in any character they wanted except N. Run your code. Once you've got your code run and you've hit N to stop, then go over to your uh, project file menu and let's open up test under bar 1.0 text or whatever you named your data file. My else print. Why doesn't that give me a blank line in my data file? It's, ju it's printing just to the screen, not to our data file. If we wanted to print it to the data file, what would we have to do? My file dot write. Taking a look at the file this way lets us verify it very well. And we can see that it's working exactly the way we want it to. But if we're going to compute the grades, it doesn't make any sense if we print it out and then go through and manually add everything up. So now we need to look at how are we going to read this information when we get ready. Now, so you don't have to recreate the file every time. Take that while loop that we created and take the um, variable that opens up our text file and comment those out. So what you're going to want to do is comment out the while loop down through the end of the if statement and you can comment out line 9. Do I need to comment out the uh, module the module function we created? Show of hands, how many think yes? Not sure, one? I'm not sure what we're commenting out. All right, this loop right here. Do we need to comment out 4, 5, and 6? When we create a function, that function is only read when we call it. So we don't have to comment it out as long as we're not going to call it. We're going to call out everything else. So get that commented out, and there are a couple of easy ways to do it. You can put the number sign in front of each line, or you can put three sets of quote marks and an asterisk at the beginning and an asterisk and three sets of quote marks or single quotes if you prefer at the end and that'll comment out that code. So what we are looking at now, you've got that code set up so now what we want to do, I can use my file again because we haven't used it and we're going to close it out when we write it so why create another variable if we don't? Line 30 what we need to do is open this file up, and I decided to use my read. So I can open up my file, or I could even open up my write, and then my read really makes it simple. And we're creating a new, we're not creating a new file, we're opening this file up this time to actually read it. By the way, so I could get line 30 on, I just pressed enter. You don't have to do that. Remember, that's one of the options that we have if you want to try and keep your code from running all the way. And so let's test it out to see if it works. Once you get line 30, 33, and 35 in, go ahead and run the program, and it should print out the three or however many students and their grades you put in. So. Let's go back and modify it so we can read everything at once. And we do that very easily. We're going to do a while true this time. We're going a little bit different than we did before. Why, why might we do just a while true? We're only going to read it once, and we know it's got a definite end to it. And we handle that in at line 34. And so I'll let you type it in, and we'll talk about line 34 and 5. Hold that thought. The question was, do we need to create a function for open file? 
Hold that thought. Well, let's see. So none of our programs are No, you're, you should work with what's on the screen right now. It's not working? And you've got read line in. Okay, I did not show you the, the function for open code, so you are correct. You've got to create a function to open code. So instead of the W, you're going to have an R. So go ahead and create an open code function, and Thursday, or open text file Thursday, we'll look at how can we use just one function to do that entire process. So you can use the function we currently have created as a template. Just retype it, but change it over to, again, line 37. We need to make sure that we close that file out when we're done reading it. We can't accidentally write to it, but we can have some problems with the operating system if we leave those files hanging around open. If you have people like Colby and they know, they've learned how to exploit. All right, so if we take a look at where we are right now versus our requirements, there's some things that you can do as homework. First of all, it would be nice to have a menu so I don't have to go through and comment out I'm going to create a file so I can just select what I'm going to do. Granted, the code that we're looking at is a little sloppy. Look at how you would do it better um, and what you might, some of the things that you might do to make it better and apply some of those to the code that you're creating. And then the last thing is place your .py file in the script Dropbox files and lists part one before Wednesday, I'm sorry, before Thursday, March 31st at 10 a.m. Before Thursday, March 31st at 10 a.m. The Dropbox is already out there and I believe the slides opened up at 11.45 for you to take a look at them.